joined by Blair Spittle. Blair, thanks very much for coming on, mate. How are you doing? Aye, not bad, mate. Thanks uh, Thanks very much for having me. My pleasure. I just want to start off by asking what your early football memories are. Um, growing up, uh, you know, where, where I stayed in Erskine, there was quite... Uh, it was like my brother and all oh, his mates. I never really had anyone kind of around my age like that stayed close to me. Uh, to me, so he was kind of playing in the car parks growing up. Really, like my brother, his pals, like boys that stayed in the street and that. So, um, no, it was good times, man. It was good times. And then when I was four, I joined Erskine Boys Club, and that was kind of like my upbringing in football, playing there for for a number of years. And how did you end up getting scouted by Rangers? Uh, well, we had we had a to be fair, we were lucky. We had a very good age group um, at Erskine. Uh, there was quite a few years kind of getting picked up, like in the Paisley and District League. But like, we were pro, we were the best team, like at our age. So uh, there was a few years. There was two boys that went to St Mun, and one of the other boys went to Clyde, who were a good team at the time. Um, but it was just luck, you know. I was. I think they must have just came and watched me at a good time and, and uh, managed to get taken in on trial. But I think like at that stage, Rangers took a lot of boys in on trial because when I went, it was like a good three or four games or like 11 a side. Um, like different, obviously everyone playing in it. Uh, so it was that many boys kind of get taken in to just kind of have a look and see what was what. And thankfully it was like, there was a few years, me and... Uh, but, if anybody probably heard that Andy Murdoch that plays for there now he played for oh. Rangers a couple of times he was me and him kind of signed uh, at the same time as each other so it was a good time and what sort of grounding did that get you coming through at Rangers um, I was it was brilliant to be fair obviously going into like Murray Park and places like that two or three times a week it was it was amazing um, you know and there was uh, I was about 13 this was under 14s and 15s I was there so it was like a time where obviously the club were really successful. Um, when we were coming through, it was like in school holidays and stuff, we'd get taken in a couple of like school days. Well, I say school days, but like full days mm-hmm. through the week um, just to kind of see what it was like going in day to day. And you got to see like the lights of the, the first team and stuff like that, training as well. It was, uh, it was an amazing time. Um, I really enjoyed it. Like, well, my first year especially, the second year not so much, but um, uh, it was it was it was a really good time. Something I'll never forget. What happened in the second year? Um, I think in the second year I went as a fullback. Um, that's where I played growing up, and my second year we hadn't had a we hadn't had, obviously it was a, it was a good year for me personally. Um, got on really well with the boys we had a great group but second year we brought in quite a lot of players and uh, I found myself kind of in and out of the team and then in pre-season I broke my collarbone and I was out for three months um, with that it was a bit of a wee guy at this stage so I get, I get like flung off the ball uh, but it was a lot bigger than me and where I landed it just my collarbone completely snapped Um so I was out for three months with that, and then when I came back, it was just hard to kind of get a chance from there on in. But um, like I said, it's something something I'll never forget being there. And leaving Rangers, how me- how tough mentally is that at that age? Because you, you don't I, really think, um, do you know what I mean? You don't really think of the positives of it. No, no, I think it kind of sets you up for that, uh, kind of the feeling that will come. Um, obviously, I'd, in a way, I kind of knew it was happening because I wasn't getting the kind of chance that I was wanting. It was kind of like every weekend I was playing 20 minutes here, half an hour there. I was never getting a kind of full game. I didn't like that to kind of show what it was about. But, um, you know, it, it was, I remember sitting in the car with my mum and dad when they told me and it was, I was, I was, I was very upset about it. But, um, like at that point, I was, I was quite down about football and stuff as well. Like I said, I wasn't, feeling as I was getting a fair crack at it but um, obviously what happened next was I went to Queen's Park and it was it was an even better time for me But a blessing in disguise eh? Aye, aye like I said I think obviously growing up obviously where I'm from it's mostly Rangers and Celtic well in Scotland basically aye. And, you know the biggest clubs in Scotland and um, you know when you get 
let go from these sort of places. Nobody sets you up for it. You don't really know how to deal with it. But like I said, it was it was uh, important. I just kind of knuckled down and got on that. Well, I think it was about Queen's Park at that time that they just kept producing like good good players. Even now, like yourself, Shanklin, Robertson, they've all went on to have like good careers. What was that about them at that time? Yeah, uh, I think it was the way we were. It was all kind of boys that had been let go from clubs and it all kind of come together. I think, I think Lawrence was at Hearts when he was younger and they'd obviously been let go from Celtic and stuff. And, you know, we had a great grounding um, in terms of our youth coaches, Dave McCallum, he's at, he's at Rangers now. Um, he was a great coach for us. Like, the kind of support that we were given at Queen's Park and the chance to just go and enjoy our football. Like... Obviously, it was, it was a much smaller club, but that mm-hmm. ability to go and play first team football at a young age, like the chance that Queen's Park were given boys, like they were notorious for it. So, um, you know, it was, a, it was a bit of a no brainer going there and, and, and seeing what it could take me. How good was Andy Robertson at that point? <laughs> it's mental because when I joined, it was under 17s and he was a, he was a centre mid at that point. And, uh, like he wasn't really getting a game in our team. Like we had two age groups. We had one group that played kind of SPL, uh-huh. like youth teams, and then our group, which was like me, Lawrence, Andy, Aidan Connolly, that's at Rafe Rovers now. Mm-hmm. Um, we were kind of playing against the SF. Well, it was the SFL, like the lower league teams at that stage. So we were playing against like Montrose, four for all these teams. Um, and Andy was a centre mid, and he wasn't really getting a chance. Um, that's insane man and then it was like the boy in our team that was playing left back uh, he got moved up to the SPL team and I think it was just like one game they tried him at left back see how he was and I swear to god it was like that was it like after that that was him just he just flew from there and to be fair he's not really looked back since no definitely no way no. and yourself when did you first hear the interest from Dundee United um, I think they they try. I, I never knew this until when I was talking to going. But at the time when Andy and Aiden left to go up there, apparently they tried to take me then. Um, so like, pretty, I was in a pretty fortunate position that like in my age group as well that all the boys like yeah, Andy Aiden and Lawrence had kind of came up before me to play in the first team at Queens Park. Mm-hmm. So like, it, it probably wasn't as as much of a gamble. Like playing me in terms of like they'd worked, so that was kind of it. So Andy, Aiden, and Lawrence had all left, and then we kind of had a full rebuild because season after Rangers left, uh, Rangers went up to League One. It was kind of like all the players in that team left, and it was like a new team getting put together. And to be fair, I'd had quite a good season that year. In in the January, I think there was talk of me going. Mm-hmm. Like that was the kind of first time that I'd spoke to. Well, I had my agent at the time, but um, he'd spoke to me about going to Dundee United and potentially getting loaned back for the second half of the season to Queen's Park. Um, but that was, uh, I was at college at the time doing sports coaching. And it was kind of like the February time when I kind of knew I was going to go full time in football that I just decided to kind of leave college and concentrate fully on on getting there. Um, and doing everything that I possibly could to, to get myself ready for it. Is that a tough decision at that time? What, going leaving, through? No, like leaving college, college. or like it's uh, a gamble. Not, 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 it was a no-brainer for me because it was everything that I right. kind of wanted to do. Um, and obviously to take that next step, I kind of ha- had to do it. So um, probably looking back, I, I could I could have stayed on, and maybe still went full-time, but I just thought, put all my eggs in, in the one basket and, and kind of go for it and, and see what it takes me. And I can't have you on and not speak to you about your, your double in the Dundee derby. <laughs> that, that goal, by the way, where you're on the edge and just shimmy past too, that is, mm-hmm. that is such a good goal. I was watching uh, it last night, such a good finish. <laughs> uh, it was a toe poke in the end, but there were special games to kind of be a part of. Um, the great times, like, Obviously, the way that season ended wasn't great, but um, you know, being able to play in these in these games uh, at that time and, and and obviously scoring them was was amazing. Was that by far the biggest game you'd played in at that age? 
Uh, at that age, probably I. Um, it was just the, the kind of atmosphere about it because Dundee were a good side at that time. Um, you know, they had great stuff there. Emmons up top, they were yeah. consistently getting named for player of the year at that stage. But um, uh, it was it was it was an amazing fixture to play in that night as well under the lights at, at Tannadice. It was it was special. How did you look back in your time at United? Obviously relegation, but mm-hmm. uh, a, bit, a bit mixed to be honest. I think um, you know my first year it was amazing. Um, obviously the, the players that I, I played with like Armstrong, Mackay, Stephen, Chiffchie. You know, to learn from these guys, it was it was it was amazing. In the first year, we had a lot of success, and then the second year wasn't wasn't obviously what we wanted. Um, a lot of stuff kind of happened that year, but um, it just it just wasn't to be for us. And then my third year, we nearly got promoted in the way uh, the first game, the first year back up, we could beat off Hamilton in the playoffs, and I remember that day vividly how how down I was after it. Um, you know, it was kind of everything that we'd, we'd aim for that season was building up into that one game and for it to end in, in such disappointment, it was horrendous, to be honest. They also are just so cruel if you're on the other end of it. Eh? Aye, well, I've been on the wrong I end. I was going to say, I've got that later, but you've got a couple. Aye, the Hamilton one was was brutal. I remember the, the home game, it was Cy Murray. He gets sent off for two dives. Uh-huh. Um, and it was like the first one was, was a blatant dive. To be honest, um, no qualms about that. But the second one, I think, like I was close up, like at it, and he, he clearly gets kicked. And it was one of those ones like it just doesn't go for you. And if we'd have got the penalty there and scored it, you never know what would have happened. All with butts and maybe's, but um, no, it was it was a horrendous time. So you just on that, obviously with VAR coming in. Are you looking forward to that? Uh, aye, I am. I think so. I think we had a kind of dubious one at the weekend. Um, there, I think Louis Moult scored a goal, and it was kind of, uh, it's kind of nip and tuck whether he was offside or not. Um, so it would have been interesting to see where that would have happened. But I think the sooner it's in, the better for us. And on to your time moving on to Thistle, you started there on fire, didn't you? I started really well. Um, I probably needed to to get away from Dundee, get back down the road. Um, a kind of fresh start, probably needed that. Um, you know, it was a, it was a good change in them to, to come into as well. A lot of guys that I'm still in contact with today. Um, and, you know, it was it was a good start to this, well, a good start to the season uh, that I had, but, um, I, but I was a bit indifferent, to say the least. The playoffs again, being your cup. <laughs> Right. Obviously, I said to you before, me being a Livingston fan, so I'm a mm-hmm. bit biased. Do you think that's probably like out of the options that you could have played? Do you think that's probably the one team you probably didn't want? I think so. I think. Tell me if I'm probably. being biased. No, no, that's not at all. I, think be, I just think the momentum in that, we were just yeah, flying. Definitely. definitely. I think we played Livy in the bet, Fred, that year, and they beat us in penalties. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that day we kind of got a taste of it, like what Livy would, would do to you. Um, right. You know, they had three really good defenders at the back and they weren't afraid of putting the ball up and just making playing you deal with them long balls, playing off settings and all that. They had a lot of good players. Um, so I think when it came to that game, I think we went 1-0 up early in the first leg and I think we gave away a goal. I think Boy Jacob scored literally right. five minutes later. It just changed the momentum straight back in Livy's favour. I think if we'd have held on for an RB bit, I'd never know what would have happened. And then they're coming to coming to for Hill for the second leg, like defending a lead. Now like you just knew it was what was going to happen. It was just going to be a case of like us trying to break them down. We couldn't do it, and, and they hit us in the counter. Um, you know what happens, and they, they definitely deserve to go through over the two games. What's it like being the Premiership club in that situation? Because People will say, oh, it's benefit, like, it's massively in their favour, which to an extent it is, but you're coming in off terrible form normally, whilst the other team could be flying. Hi. Um, I mean, that is hard um, in terms of, like you say, going into the game, you could be going into it on the run of a 
a run of negative results. Um, we'd actually went in there on, the, on the back of a win against Dundee. We thought that we'd kind of get ourselves out it. You know, we, had, we, did have a, we did have a good team. I don't know what happened. There was a lot of injuries that year. A lot of things just didn't go in our favour. Um, but that those two games probably just summed up the whole season. Like it was just kind of meant to be, to be honest. Moving up to county, I've been looking forward to speaking to you about this. Was yeah. that that's probably like going up there, moving up there? That's probably like the ultimate fresh start there. Eh? <laughs> um, you know, I thought a lot about it. Um, obviously, be, being for down the road, it was it was it was a difficult decision, but. You know, it was a chance to play Premiership football again. I felt as though I did have a point to prove. Um, in terms of obviously I'd been relegated twice, so I wanted to go up there and, and give it another crack and, and, and see how see what happens. I wanted to ask you about playing under Kettlewell and Ferguson at the same time. What was that like playing under joint managers? It doesn't really happen nowadays, does it? No, no, it doesn't really. It was it was a it was a bit strange to begin with, but I think you just kind of have to, you have to get on with it. It was just, um, they both brought their own quality to it. Um, different roles, they complemented each other and that's obviously why they ended up getting the job. I think they'd done a, they had a really successful spell in charge of the reserve team and stuff like that and obviously they'd won the championship as well. Um, they, they were really good that year. Um, so, yeah, it was, it was, it was different to say the least, but, um, you know, I did enjoy it. Well, I asked you about Ross Stewart as well. What was he like to play with? So he's went on uh, and done very, very well. Aye, aye, he was brilliant. Um, I think when I'd went up, when I'd first went up, he kind of found himself playing off the left. He'd play Billy McKay. He'd play off the left. Be a lot of like diags on him and flick on. So he, a lot of his work that he was doing was for the team. Um, he was doing a pretty dogged shift and stuff off the left, but... Um, I think the season after he got a chance more centrally, and I think he just took it in his stride, and he was he was brilliant. To be fair, he just get, he had everything. To be fair, in terms of like size, he was quite aw- he was very awkward to play against. Um, and his finishing was brilliant. To be fair, so um, and a great big guy as well. So it's it's great to see what he's what he's doing now uh, down the road. Well, I asked about John Hughes as well. Desperate to get him on this man. What's he like <laughs> to play under? Oh, he was brilliant. Obviously, I had just came back from my loan back at Thistle. Um, so I just came back for a three month injury with my hamstring as well. So coming back, what happened when I come back out and loan and uh, coming back, I was a bit apprehensive about going back up the road. Um, but as soon as I spoke to John Hughes about it, and obviously Don Cowie was his assistant. Uh, Don was massive for me, but obviously getting the chance to work under Yogi was was amazing. It was uh, it was entertaining. A lot, a lot of stuff. Uh, some of the stuff he used to do it was. He's uh, an was example. Ah, he was meant to be fit. Uh, I think. So like, he, obviously, he's a big guy. He used to go in the gym and stuff, and like stupid things. Like we had a slider board that like, would be used for rehab. Mm-hmm. So it had like a. It was like a sock in it. It was like a sock that you'd put on to do like groin slides and stuff like that. I'm trying to explain how to do this, right? So he came in one day. And one day the gym used to come in all the time with the gloves on. The gloves with no uh, no fingers on them. Aye. Like doing his chest workouts and stuff like that. <laughs> so he came in one day and uh, he's like, how do you do this? How do you do this? So he's like, just whip the, the sock on. Put the sock like on top of his head, over his nut. Started like going onto the board and started just rolling on it like that. <laughs> <laughs> but just like little things like that. It was just uh, very funny, very funny. So he was, but uh, a really good coach as well. Knew the game inside out, so it was a really brilliant time to work with him. When he first came in, what did he do at that time in terms of changing the sort of mood of the place? Because that I think everyone at the time probably. Because we're down and out, to be honest. Yeah, I think um, I think just the type of character he is. He's just up and at them type guy. He's just very good for like, getting the banter going, and changing them and stuff like that. So, um, well, when I came, I came back in January, and 
just nothing but positive words to say about him, what he what he done for us. Um obviously a few kind of tricky moments. Like we didn't know if we were gonna stay up, go down, but uh, managed to get the job done at the end of the season. I think we hadn't won back to back games all season for, I think the first two games of the season were the only times the club had done it. I think we needed to go into the last three games. I think us, Kelly and Hamilton. We're going for it and I think Kelly gets seven points for nine and we won all three. It was just like one of those mad spells where we just managed to get it all together for the last three games and, and get ourselves out of it. Were you a wee bit surprised not to see him kept on? I was a wee bit high, but I think uh, I think when you see what happened next, I think you can understand why the club went for Malky in the end. Um, I think the chairman had said that that was kind of always his aim eh, eh, to get John in okay, and eh, to the end of the season to eh, eh, get the job done. And then he was kind of looking more long term, which was which was uh, his his uh, his plan. Malcolm McKay's done an unbelievable job up there. What what's he like? What was he like to work under, especially last nah, season? Nah, he was amazing. Um, probably the best best manager I've had in terms of. Just like his experience, what just simplified the game. To be honest, like just made it so simple. Obviously, we had a lot of good wide players last year. We had Cookie and, and the boy Hunbo um, last year, and it was <laughs> a lot. Of it was just like as soon as we get the ball, that's where you've got to go with the ball. Like get the ball to them as quick as we can, and then we attack teams. He made sure you were fit. But just just simple things like, like you would expect them to come in and be a lot about like organised organisation, team shape and stuff like that, but it wasn't, to be honest, it was all about team spirit, like obviously the start we had in the season, like it, there was no panic at any point during that, it was just like keep believing in what we're doing and, and things will turn and it ended up happening. Mentioned the two wingers, Hungbo and Charles Cook there, they probably got all the credit in terms of the media and other fans and that sort of thing, but, but when I watched this, I always felt like Jordan White was kind of like the unsung hero a bit because I always felt like he's always looked for him. He would link it up, the two wingers would spin off and that's where a lot of the goals came from. Yeah, I think, you know, Big Jord probably gets the tag of being a big target man. Uh, that he's type not. of player, but he's not at all. He's in terms of like what he get, what he does for the team in terms of his running. His stats were probably up there with the highest in the team in terms of mm-hmm. just like how he played that. And you wouldn't associate that with, with a big, player like himself um, you know he worked his socks off and you know once we kind of got our settled team like last, last season we probably never made as many changes like to our starting 11 once we found it it would just be one or two wee tweaks um, a few boys coming in and out but you know once we kind of got our settled team you know we went on a on a good run and finished the season strong I think it benefited you like your style in terms of it was always attack, attack, attack. You were always interested in outscoring the other team rather than de- overly defending it. I think so. I think, you know, it was just coming for work in the training ground. A lot of his, a lot of his drills were based on, like, when we would get the ball back, we'd just go, just go and attack. Obviously, be organised behind the ball and stuff like that. But, you know, it benefited us. You knew what your options were on the ball. And, um, like I said, in, in, in games, it definitely helped. I felt as though, on our day, we gave we gave every team in the league a good game. And you probably had a wee bit more of a different role for the other clubs you'd been at in terms of a bit more central. Did you enjoy that? I did. Um, that was kind of the first season that, that I'd played more centrally. Um, I think he just saw, saw me going in there and getting on the ball. That was it. It was just like every opportunity to try and get on the ball um, and make passes. Um, it was probably the most consistent spell I've had in my career. Um, in terms of just knowing what your job was in the team, going and, and executing it, and mm. I've got a lot to lot to thank Malky for that. Was that a difficult choice to leave? It was. It was. Um, obviously, I really enjoyed it up the road, but um, I had a few things going on down here um, that I needed to, to get sorted. Obviously, my my wife now she was uh, she's a teacher down the road, so. There's a lot of things to weigh up in, in that aspect in terms of longer term where we where we seen ourselves and the opportunity to come down the road obviously uh, came along and it was one I couldn't turn down. 
and Motherwell now. How have you settled in so far? I really enjoying it. Um, they're a bit sticky, a bit sticky to start with. Uh, <laughs> obviously, we like to say the least. I like it wasn't the most ideal start, but I think we've we've started the league fairly well. Obviously, we feel as though we should probably have a few more points on the table, but um, yeah, it wasn't it wasn't the most ideal start to be honest. Talk to me about those two Sligo Rovers games. What happened there? Um, I don't really know to be honest. Like the longer I kind of thought about it, um, the first game I actually felt like we played quite well. Um, we, we never really made our keeper make that many saves, but I felt as though we controlled the game. We kind of knew where we went wrong, uh, in conceding the goal. And felt like we could we could go over there and get a result, and it's just one of those games where. They're just getting into the swing of things. We'd actually started okay the first five minutes and then they get a free kick, 30 yards for goal, and the boy whips it in the top corner. There's just nothing you can do about it. It just flings the flings the game, plan, the game plan out the window. Um, and for there on in, you're just chasing the game and you're just playing into their hands. And we just we just couldn't. We just didn't play well at all, that second leg, to be honest. After that second leg, what was the dressing room like after the game? I can imagine. Uh, very down, it was just... Couldn't believe what had happened. Uh, and you kind of come to terms with the fact that what had just happened, it was it was like a bit of a blur, to be honest. Um, I can remember no one really spoke to each other. Um, just what can you say after a, after a defeat like that? It was just a very uh, down mood, so it was. Graham Alexander ends up losing his job after that game. How difficult is that for you? When that's a manager that's just convinced you to join, I it was it was tough. Um, so I only got to work with him for a couple of months, um, but I really enjoyed getting to know him um, and working under him. Obviously, things just kind of didn't work out in the end. Um, but you know, we've got we've got a new lease of life now under under the new manager, and um, we're really enjoying it. That's that's the phrase I was going to use as well. Just. In terms of watching Motherwell, I feel as if there's kind of like a wee bit of a different philosophy under Hamill. What What's he changed since he's came in? Uh, I think well, the first two the first two games we played against St Mirren and St Johnston, we played nowhere near uh-huh. where we are. Um, also, when he was caretaker, I think it was kind of that crossover between Alexander and the new manager's methods. He probably didn't want to change too much until he got the job. Um, and I think it's just kind of giving us the freedom to go and express ourselves um, so with Alexander it was a bit more rigid in terms of how he wanted the game played like you had your job and that was it whereas I think with a new manager we've got it's it's a lot more what you see on the pitch if you feel like that's right go and do it but when we get the ball wide we go and attack we, we, we go and take the game to teams um, and we've, we've done that and in the most part, I think we're, we're playing a lot better football than probably what we were at the start of the season. But it's been it's been really enjoyable. That's what I was going to say. I, I think it seems a bit more a bit more open, a bit more attacking. Mm. I don't know, maybe just a bit of a fresh slate, if that makes sense. I think so. I think um, you know, I think he's changed formation. He's tweaked the formation as well. We've went uh, instead of a sitter and two eights, he's went for two. Two central midfielders and, and a ten, and it's it's made us a bit more attacking and uh, allows us to go and, and take the game to the opposition. What players have impressed you since you've joined? Uh, Big Van Veen, I think he's the obvious one. I think um, getting the opportunity to play with him and, and link up with him, um, it's been really good. Uh, he's a really really good player. I'd obviously I knew a few of the boys before. Um, I played with McGinnett Thistle. Uh, I played with Liam Kelly when I was younger at Rangers and obviously know the quality he's got. Um so it's it's a really it's a it's a good team we've got here. And you know, like I said, we probably should have a few more points on the table than than what we've got now. Um but you know, I think it's it's been a fairly positive start for us. Being part as well is such a good I don't know if this is something players overly think of at the time, but such a good community club we do so much for Motherwell. But I think it helps you and you in a way as well with the fact that 
boosted attendances and that sort of thing. Yeah, and I think so. You're proud to be a part of it. I definitely. I think I was speaking to one of the boys about this last week. It was speaking about Motherwell as a place. Like normally, you get these sort of towns where there is still a Rangers and Celtic split. Yeah. Along with obviously the the kind of local club, but it feels as though in Motherwell, there, most people are Motherwell fans. Um, I don't know if it's like that in Livy or whatever, but. No many Livy fans, mate. I don't know. <laughs> Just making sure of that. But <laughs> uh, in Motherwell, it's, it definitely seems like that. Like there's a good percentage of the, the population are Motherwell fans and, you know, they get right behind the club and, and support as well. And how, how do you think the seasons went for you, both personally and collectively so far? I think probably like didn't start great. No, I'm big enough to say that, and it was probably since the St Johnston game that was one where I came off the pitch and I was just like, "What?" Like I remember speaking to my dad, I was just like, "Nothing's happening now. I don't, I don't get it. I don't know what's happening. Like I just don't feel right." And it was kind of after that moment, like probably letting it out, that like admitting it, that uh, you know things kind of started to turn, and since then it's, it's been good for me. Um, I've I've enjoyed it a lot more. Uh, probably probably putting too much pressure on myself as well in terms of coming to a new club. It takes time to kind of settle into everything um, and get going. Obviously, the results didn't help that, but I think since the kind of St Johnston game, that's where we've, we've kind of kicked on a wee bit and, and started playing a lot better. I think in Scotland as well, there's always like a bit of unexpectancy for players to come in and just bed in straight away, but it doesn't really happen like that, does it? I, I mean, it does take time, I think. So I went through working under Malky, kind of knowing how he worked uh-huh. to then a, a, a different manager, and it was a totally different way of wanting the game played. You know, it does take time for you to, to settle into that, and then obviously he loses his job, and you get another manager that has their own uh, kind of ideas and philosophies on football and how they think it should be played. It, it takes time. Um, but now I'm, I'm, I'm feeling a lot better and I'm feeling a lot more at home. What's the ambitions for Motherwell this season? Bit of pressure on you here. <laughs> no, I think obviously they had a good, a good, a good season last year, um, finishing fifth. So know how competitive it's going to be this year again. Um, I think last season was a bit of a strange season in terms of the so-called bigger clubs, the Hibs and Aberdeen, probably underperformed for their ex- like their expectations. But Aye. you know, it's always trying to see if we can go as good, if not better than that. I think we've got a good enough team to do that. Um, we know it's going to be tough, but why not try and aim for kind of similar places to where we were last year? And I think wanting to do wanting to do better in the Cups as well. So if it's all right with you, mate, we'll finish off with a quick five questions. Happy with that. So first one, your best mate in football? Uh, oof, got a few to be fair. I shared, uh, I shared a flat with Charlie Telfer for three years. Uh, Real good friend. Um, other guys I've met through football. Boy, Cammy Ballantyne, he's at Airdrie. Mm-hmm. Um, and then with good pals of Stuart Bar- oh, Still am good pals of Stuart Bannigan, Tam O'Ware, Fifth Thistle. Still speak to him pretty much every day. So um, I would say I would say those four, probably the best pals I've made. The best stadium that you've played in? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Probably, I would say, I'll go out with, out with Celtic and Rangers, I'll go out with okay. that. Obviously, played at Hamden a few times. Um, when I was at Queen's Park, that was obviously our home for like the first six months that I was there. And I've been back a few times for semi-finals and finals. So, I'd say there's always a special feeling when you go there. The best player you've played against? Directly, probably, probably Steve Davis. That's a good show. Ah, that. uh, he's just in terms of controlling a game of football, he's one of the best I've ever seen. The biggest moaner you've played with? <sighs> eh, right. See, you told me that I was going to think a lot about my five aside team, but moaner in terms of moaner, I kind of think you're an obvious one with bunch of the boys you've played with. Aye, to be fair, you'll probably hate me for saying it, but uh, Chris Erskine, 
Squiddy. Aye. He was at Levy for a bit. He had the he had the tendency for a for a right good moan in him, so he did. But uh, one of the best guys you'll meet as well. Nicest guy off it. That's why it was so uh, different here seeing him like that. But uh, probably probably him. I. Your biggest achievement in football. Um. I'd probably say I'd probably say top six last season in terms of where we were after the first round of games. I think nobody probably would have seen us doing that, but um, you know the kind of team spirit that we had last year, getting and getting so close to to being the first team that County had in Europe would have, would have been amazing. But I think top six um, was something we probably wouldn't have dreamed of at the start of the season. And on to the question, I'll put pressure on you here, three one. Best five aside yeah. team of players you've played with and why? Right, okay. Um, right, I'm going to go... I'm not putting myself in it. I'm not putting myself in it. I'll put, Up to you, I'll you can if you want. No, 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 no. I'll go goalie, defender, two midfielders and a striker. Um, in goals, I'll go Liam Kelly. I think very underrated with the ball at his feet. Agreed. Um, Probably the best in the league at it for me. Um, an unbelievable shot stopper as well. Uh, Defence. <sighs> right, okay. I love how Defense. much you're thinking about this. I know, I know. I'm thinking about it. Um, probably, probably big John Suter at the back. But I'll go for him by sale. Um, a lot of folk probably would have thought I'd have put Andy, but I'm putting Soapy in it to do it himself at the back in terms of his composure on the ball as well. I'm going ball playing five aside, um, so he'd be in there. Um, really good player. Probably when I was at United, probably never see, probably never seen the best of him. Um, because like I said, it was a pretty a pretty bad time for the club, but um. Seen what he's gone on to do with the with the setbacks that he's had along the way is is pretty special to be honest. Uh-huh. Um, middle, I'll go with Ar- Stuart Armstrong. Um, probably the best player I've played with. Um, just such a good engine, very underrated again for me in terms of what what he brings to what he brings to a game and um, I just getting to learn off him at that stage. Um, he was an amazing player, and alongside him, this is some start, by the way. A lot of people laugh at me when I say this, right? I played with a guy at Queen's Park. It was called Davy Anderson, right? He's a wee centre mid, and I swear nobody ever believes me how good he was. I think if you spoke to anyone that was in my Queen's Park team or anyone kind of playing more leagues at a stage, truly, one of how he never went to play at a higher level than this, I'll never know. I think he was just happy playing with his mates. And he was, to be fair, I think he was good in terms of how it worked around his job and stuff like that. Um, like in terms of playing for Queen's Park. But when Rangers were in the third division, he won player of the year. So, like, he That's kind of crazy, man. He was honestly unbelievable. He had, he was about five foot six, five foot seven. He was tiny. Played centre of the park, you couldn't get the ball off him. Just so good on the ball. Um, and then up front, I'm going for Scott McDonald that I played with at Thistle. Um, I, in ter- I played in the number 10 at Thistle, played in the 10. And in terms of a striker to play off of and, and play with, he was just brilliant. Complimented my game so much. Brought me on a lot. In terms of learning how to play with him as well. Um no, so you could see the quality that he had playing at the level that he did for Celtic and stuff like that. He was just uh, just an amazing player. And for the six months that I played with him, it was just a joy. A few of the boys that, have, that were in that Thistle team, they they put McDonald in as well. Aye, so, who, who was it? Who was it? I can't I think Barnigan did. Aye, we speak about it all the time in terms of what he brought for us. Because he brought, we were in a dogfight at that stage. But in terms of what he brought for our team at that stage, he was just he kept, probably 
no single-handedly, but it was a big part of why we stayed up that year. And just his experience, like how he could work a back four, it was it was amazing. Amazing. Would Stevie Lawless have played with him as well? I'm not sure if Stevie missed him by, by a year. He would, have, he would have just missed him, aye. Aye, because I played with Stevie my first year. He never played the second year, but amazing player. It's a good, good team, that. Aye. Probably up there. Like I said, a lot of, like I said, a lot of folk would know about Davy Anderson, but if you have anyone on that's played in the kind of lower leagues or played against that Queen's Park team, honestly, amazing. They never really amazing. got a chance to move on or that. I think he, he probably would have, but like I said, I think he was just happy playing where he was. Do you know what I mean? He had, he, I think the club just worked for him. Um, I think apart from that, he played for, I think it was called Burnley Laid side in the juniors and stuff, but honestly, can't, I try to explain it to people all the time. I cannot believe he never played at a higher level. That's how good he was. There's, there's probably been a few boys like that, and they're mm -hmm. just quite happy in terms of like work life balance. No, I like, I think so. I think like people probably don't realize how tough a decision it is playing going from part time to full time in terms of transition. Sometimes it doesn't work out for, for boys. Um, like the way it, the way like Scottish football is probably at the moment in terms of money wise like financially maybe doesn't it hasn't got the rewards that it is an easy enough decision to go full time but like I said just that an amazing player truly take that five aside team then top man like thanks very much for coming on oh, not a problem I appreciate it thanks for having me <laughs>